<laughs> Hello there, everybody. Bunny here, and I would like to tell you all a story. A story revolving around one central character and his quest for greatness. Ladies and gentlemen, this video is a sequel to the origin story of quite possibly the greatest thief ever known to mankind, ch 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 cheetah For those of you who may not know, I created an origin video for this magnificent specimen over two years ago, and given the numerous amount of DLC expansions, gear changes, skill changes, and the complete rework of the champion system, I thought it was only right to give him the sequel that he deserves. Now I know that a lot of you watching right now may not play The Elder Scrolls Online, or never watched the first video, so I'll try my best to explain things along the way. First things first, let's start with the premise of Chicha Chichita and what his overall mission is. As outlined in the original video, The Elder Scrolls Online has always been one of those game away from games, so to speak. I always find myself gravitating back towards it when I'm bored with other games, or just want to relax in a chill game with my buddies. Usually, during these long hiatuses away from the game, there are large content updates that bring new gear sets and changes that require loads of in-game gold in order to keep up with. Now, of course, you can craft things or kill things to make money, but that's repetitive and cliché. No, this bunna likes to steal shit. And maybe that's just my upbringing of playing Sly Cooper until the disc didn't work anymore. But it's embedded in my video game DNA. Hence the origin of ch ch, -Ch cheetah the world's greatest thief. Or at least he was, until all these content updates that I was talking about. So what all changed, you might ask? Well, a lot, so let's take it one step at a time. Now bear with me here, some of these challenges I tackled at different intervals as the content was coming out, and I'm only now making a video on it, so this entire story isn't precisely chronological, but it's fairly accurate. As a quick refresher, ch ch, -Ch cheetah is a Nightblade Khajiit with a long, obnoxious tail, so he comes naturally equipped with better thieving capabilities. You know, things like a decreased detection radius while sneaking, and an increased chance to pickpocket. He also wears medium armor, because it's the obvious choice for thieving in ESO, providing reduced cost to sneak, reduced stealth detection radius, and extra stamina recovery. Oh yeah, and he's also a vampire, which completely negates the movement speed penalty of sneaking, decreases the time it takes to enter sneak, and automatically turns us invisible if sprinting for more than 3 seconds. While he was already a great thief before, he needed some more polishing to become legendary. First things first, I worked on maxing out Legger Domain to receive the full benefits of the skill tree. For those of you who may not know, it's basically the thieving skill tree of ESO, providing decreased sneak costs, increased success with pickpocketing, more interactions with the black market, increased chance of forcing locks, and decreased bounty costs if I did happen to get caught. Next I completed the entire Thieves Guild questline for the obvious reason. It pertains to thieving. Now this questline was extremely grindy and oftentimes repetitive, but not altogether unenjoyable. Ultimately, we are after all of the passives in the skill tree, which, like Legger Domain, helps us to be a better thief. It gives me access to thieves' caches in the world, a rapid reduction in bounty and heat, increased gold from selling fenced items, a once-per-day get-out-of-jail-free card, quick escapes in the form of footpads, and decreased detection radius from witnesses and guards. All in all, the quests were completely worth the time investment and make the thieving experience much more enjoyable. Plus, I got this sweet outfit as a reward, which is just mwah, perfect for a thief. I also started the Sigic Order quest line so I could gain access to portals in the open world, which were basically just bonus treasure chests. Now, it was right around this time that leads were introduced into the game, and it just so happens that my wife was infected with the UNNAMED VIRUS OF 2020, which forced us both into quarantine for an extended period of time. Now, don't worry, she's fine and I'm fucking invincible, so I never got it, but the three weeks time away from work and responsibilities was the perfect opportunity to max out the two newest skill lines in the game, Scrying and Excavation. Now at the time, I didn't plan on making a follow-up video to the original, so I didn't record any of the grind. But in quick summary, here's how it all works. Leads are unique, untradeable drops from certain monsters or chests in the game. Each lead acts like a hidden treasure map of sorts, where you have to scry the location of the treasure, then excavate the area to find the artifact. Usually it takes multiple unique artifacts to compile a single item of any value. So the gameplay loop looks something like this. Acquire the specific lead, scry for the location, excavate the artifact, and repeat until complete. Now, why am I telling you all of this? Because scrying and excavating for leads is the only way of acquiring mythic items, which are some of the most powerful items that ESO has to offer. They're one item set bonus pieces of gear that offer extremely unique traits that oftentimes only pertain to very niche builds. Builds like, say, a dedicated master thief would be using. One of these items is known as the Ring of the Wild Hunt, which boosts our movement speed by plus 45% when out of combat, plus an additional 7% from the swift trait. Now, it took a lot of grinding for the leads, scrying, and excavating, but flash forwards through that three-week quarantine I was talking about, and BOOM, BABY, WE GOT OURSELVES A SWEET RING! 
Now, because this ring was a one-item set bonus, it does impact our current gear setup. I opted to remove Mother Sorrow from our setup because it didn't pertain to thieving anyways, and instead we added in the Slime Craw headpiece for the extra crit chance, because why not? We also spent our hard-earned transmute tokens on upgrading our Jailbreaker jewelry to the Swift perk for bonus movement speed, but a later update would actually change how the ability Concealed Weapon works, and thus change our gear setup again. Previously, this ability provided a flat plus 25% movement speed bonus when slaughtered on your bar. However, now it simply provides Minor Expedition, which is the bonus that we were already receiving from the Jailbreaker set that I spent loads of time and effort grinding for. I decided the best option was to replace the Jailbreaker set entirely in favor of a better set bonus, and after a little research I settled on the Adept Riders set that was introduced with the Somerset expansion. This set provided Major Expedition at all times, which was the bonus that we were previously receiving from channeling the Elusive Mist ability. Not having to maintain this ability for movement speed anymore sounded incredible, as it did make the thieving experience a bit cumbersome and repetitive. Not to mention, they ended up completely changing how this ability works in the near future anyways, so it all worked out for the best. I hopped over to my main crafting account and got to work making the set. I didn't bother to upgrade any of the gear to legendary status, at least not yet, as it was going to be very expensive and ultimately unnecessary, but I'm a bit of a completionist and will probably do this in the future. Next I noticed that there was a thief personality available for purchase in the store, which basically just changes your character's idle animations and posture to make them look more... thiefy. This was a completely necessary purchase that my wife totally doesn't know about, and really helps to seal this character's overall persona. And finally, we reach the meat and potatoes of this character. The thing that makes him so incredibly successful at not only looting chests in the open world, but also pulling in quite a profit from pickpocketing NPCs. You see, at some point in time, in one of my hiatuses away from the game, they decided to completely revamp the champion point system from the ground up. Now initially, this pissed me off, because I had things down into perfection before, but after exploring the options available, I quickly found out that the system was a huge buff to thieving in general. Now at the time of making this video, I'm almost a level 1000 champion, but I still don't have quite enough points to snag everything I would want. The most important tree to us is by far the craft tree, as it offers bonuses to thieving that you can't get anywhere else in the game. Bonuses such as an additional 25% fence item value, increased quality of pickpockets, a 25% heat reduction when escaping, increased quality of loot from chests, increased gold gain, and an extra 10% movement speed. Now of course I invested loads of points into other trees, but these were the big hitters for this character's build. There's an additional feat in the craft tree called Steed's Blessing that can increase your movement speed even further by an extra 20%, but it's completely unnecessary since I'm already sitting at the movement speed cap 24-7. Then I discovered a brand new non-combat pet for sale in the store that was almost a requirement to be a Master Thief, and I just had to buy it, just don't tell my wife. Why was it a requirement, you might ask? Well, in addition to being absolutely fucking adorable, this little dude also provides us with an additional 5 inventory slots account-wide, which just helps with thieving capacity in general. That and the life of a thief can be quite lonely sometimes, so having the company around is most welcome. This little guy comes with the default name of Hall Ass, which is absolutely hysterical, but I felt that we had to rename him so he's not the same as everybody else's donkey, and so I changed it to Boondock. Boondock. So, let's do a quick recap of what Chichi Chichita is capable of. He has a capped movement speed at a consistent 200%. He has plus 55% pickpocket success and a higher quality of pickpocket loot. He receives an extra 35% gold for fenced items, increased gold from all sources, no movement speed penalty in sneak and a 50% reduction of time to enter sneak, unlimited stamina, mana, and health return from Dorlax Bray, and is essentially undetectable while sneaking due to all of the radius reductions. Plus, fucking boondock, oh my god. Oh, don't tell my wife. Chicha Chichita was completely regeared, respect, and had the companion he needed to become the world's greatest thief. Looting chests in the open world was still the most profitable thing to do, but pickpocketing NPCs was also surprisingly profitable and reliable. Previously, pickpocketing or looting coffers was kind of a waste of time. But now that the price of fenced items has been increased, and it's so much easier to get out of paying bounties, it is a very relaxing and steady source of income in the background. His pockets are already beginning to overflow with the success of his pilfering empire, and we've only just begun. So, you're probably wondering, is this the end of our hero's story? Is he maxed as max can get? Well, no, not quite. I can still upgrade all of his current gear to legendary and transmute his new jewelry to the swift trait, but honestly, it's complete overkill and a giant waste of money. Does that mean I'll still do it? Probably, but that's for another time. As I mentioned before, I didn't quite have enough champion points to get everything I wanted in the craft skill tree either, but that stuff will simply come over time with gameplay. 
There's also the matter of mapping out logical and efficient open-world chess routes and zones that offer sought-after set bonuses. Previously, the best zones to loot were Merkmire, Deshaun, Rothgar, or Rivenspire, but a lot has changed and metas have shifted, so I'll need to do more research to find the best options. But that is a tale for another day, and we come to the conclusion of our current saga. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, then please be sure to leave it a like down below, subscribe to the channel with notifications on so you can stay up to date on all of my latest content, join the Discord for a community of like-minded women creatures, and please keep leaving me comments because they warm my little bunna heart. A special thank you goes out to all of the bunnas that support me on Patreon. You guys are amazing. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.